If you are studying gene expression by real-time PCR, then you are likely using a relative quantification or comparative CT method. This method of analysis requires the use of an endogenous control. That is, a gene which does not change expression across different samples, treatments, or time points. This stable expression is required in order to provide a reliable basis for gene comparison. So you may have asked yourself a question like the one we received from Wade from Kenyon College. What's the best way to select a valid endogenous control for relative qPCR? To identify the best endogenous control, we need to find a gene that does not change expression across our different samples. Stable expression is defined as small variations, between 0 and 0.5 CTs, for the samples of your endogenous control gene. Keep in mind that a difference of one cycle equates to a two-fold difference in initial template. Furthermore, a control with delta CT values that vary over a two-cycle range would have nearly a four-fold difference in expression levels. If we were to select a normalizer gene whose expression varied by two or four-fold between samples, then the final fold calculations would be in error by this same factor. Since there is no way to anticipate how a particular treatment or disease state will affect gene expression, the only way to definitively identify the right control is to simply perform a qPCR run with your samples. You will need to choose some candidate genes and check their expression. Here are some easy steps to follow. First, identify your candidate endogenous control genes. Ways to do this include checking the literature, including our application note if working with human or mouse samples, or simply testing some common controls, as seen from our assay search tool. It is necessary to test at least one control gene, but it is helpful to test two to three candidates in order to choose the one that gives the best results for you. If our literature search turned up empty, then we would have to do a larger test, such as one of the endogenous control panels to screen our samples. These panels are made up of 16 to 32 of the most commonly studied candidate genes to allow for screening multiple samples quickly and efficiently. But lucky for us, actin and HPRT look like good candidates that worked before in a similar experiment. Great! Now we're ready to start validating. So now we have identified two candidate endogenous control genes to study. Our next step would be to purify RNA using the same method across all of your samples. Be sure to include samples that may be affected by treatment or time course, so you are able to compare your endogenous control across treatments. Third, quantify and use the same amount of RNA from each sample. Since you will be validating your control gene, it is vital to keep template and reagent volumes consistent. Next, test your candidate endogenous control genes in your qPCR reaction using the same volume of cDNA in each reaction. Finally, Check the delta CT between samples for each candidate endogenous control gene. The best control will have a delta CT as close to zero as possible, as this means there is no change in expression across your samples. When using Life Technologies real-time PCR instruments, you can let the software do this calculation for you. Our relative quantification software, such as Expression Suite and Data Assist, can do this for you in a QC plot. The software will score the candidate controls with the lowest score indicating the most appropriate control. So that's it, we're done. By identifying the best endogenous control gene to use, you're now ready to move on to your gene expression study. If you've got real-time PCR questions, just remember to ask TACMAN on Facebook, Twitter, or at lifetechnologies.com forward slash ask TACMAN. Thanks for watching.